What's up, everybody, and welcome back to episode number two of New Beginnings, a podcast with Chris Shavarma and the most amazing guests throughout the YouTube sphere, Burpeeville, you know, the whole place. Today, I have a very, very special guest. Probably everyone here knows him already, but since I talked to Simon Tragesa, I came in contact with him through Gus. Shout out to you, my friend, and thank you very much for making this connection. Because ever since I've seen this dude, which name I'm going to reveal in a second, I felt very identified with his style, his stance, um, his message, his approach. And ultimately, I found out that, you know, he's, he's one of the true ones. So let me introduce to you, to our dear friend, Aldo from Crusades of Motivation. Aldo, ¿qué pasa, mi hermano? ¿Cómo estamos? Hey, my boy, Chris, man. Thank you so much for having me. Episode number two, man. Like I told you before, you came with this uh, new beginnings, man. This, this, just the title on itself means a lot to me, man, because every day is a new beginning, man. And as, as I always say on my channel, today is another day, man. I'm just, every day we got to be grateful for what we have, man. And a new day is a new beginning, man. So thank you so much, my brother, man, from the heart, from having me here. I'm just glad I, I I made that comment. I'm just glad I made that comment on on, on that video you were with uh you were with Simon, which is uh, beautiful to really get to know him and and find out more about his training and how you guys met and and you know all the things that you guys got going on, man. Thank you so much for having me here. Shout outs to our brother Gusto for making the connection, man. Uh, this is our community, man, and this is beautiful. Absolutely, this is beautiful. Yeah. And to be honest, I also enjoy this modality a lot. I'm, I'm someone who likes to talk and um, <laughs> just showing up to uh, to rep it out. Uh, it's fine and everything. But also there's like so many layers in this game of, of, of getting to create a community through YouTube. And one of those layers, you know, is a very simple one. We're individuals with a whole universe inside ourselves, and we got a story to tell. We have a background. You know, we're out here living life and getting gains. So this opportunity for me to get to know other people uh, is fantastic and share that communication because none of this of what we're doing right now has been scripted. I mean, we just figured it out, and now we're here talking about amazing stuff. And Aldo, just like me, you know, we come from a Spanish speaking background. I'm from Guatemala and you are from Mexico. And a funny fact, true fact, uh, whenever we communicate, we speak Spanish. And <laughs> right now we're, we're doing this in English because we're going worldwide with this. So yeah, we need to give that message to everyone out there watching this. And in this short period of time that I've been getting to know Aldo a little bit better, I found out some really amazing stuff about him. And uh, one of them, I don't know how known this is, but my man, I knew you, you, had, you had the soul of an artist just by the way you give yourself a presence on YouTube, but you are truly an artist. Um, Aldo, he, I might link it down below if that's okay with him. Um, he's a tattoo artist and he does some insane, like really, really big work. I mean, I don't think he's going to write, uh, I love you, darling. On his arm. <laughs> no, no. If you, if you want like a full sleeve or full chest tattoo, call Aldo and, and he's going to, he's going to give you some good work on that. And, um, so it, it all started to come together in my mind, you know, like his approach on YouTube, his approach to fitness, because he, you are extremely diverse on, on fitness. I mean, I've seen you skate. I don't know if I was tripping, but I think I saw you with a bow and arrow. You, you threw the bow and arrow and, and, then, and then you went running after it. I, I, don't, I don't really remember that, uh, but I was like, holy crap, well, what's going on here? And he's in the burpees game. He's in the bars game. And I mean, he's on the high rep bars game. You can check out his videos. He'd had an attempt of doing 1,000 pull-ups 
on his first try. I think he did like 911. Uh, he miscounted. I don't know what happened. Something uh, <laughs> like that. But then he came back, I don't know, in less than a week, probably two days, if I'm not mistaken. And then he did it again. So, and he reached the 1000. And I, for me, that was just like, holy crap. He also does my Shavarma set, but instead of doing 100 pull ups, he does 100 muscle ups, of course. And then he does <laughs> 100 burpees and the squats, which is just like boom, way beyond my capacity. But, um, um, I was I was trying to figure out a way to approach you with a question that might bring together your approach to fitness and your approach to art, because I wonder if you see any parallels in that. I mean, for me, both are united in the sense that you, you are acquiring a skill development practice, you know, like if you tattoo, you know, you need to practice that. If you do burpees and you try to go for the 300, you can't go up at it at once. I remember you doing the, the the shot collar with the 500 and you were like really sore in the elbows. You couldn't finish. And then you took a step back. You, I guess you uh, figured it out, a better strategy and, and, and hit that approach again. And I think that art is like that as well. You know, like sometimes you draw something, it's, it's not like you want it start again and and within this practice you you develop a a progression you better yourself and for me talking to someone who actually does this both the realm of art and both the realm of fitness i wonder do you see any parallels in that oh man that's a that's a beautiful question man you know what um for me fitness is all man and yeah, you see me doing all the all kinds of crazy shit because uh, I believe fitness is a playground. There's so many things that you can do within fitness, right? You can skate, you can throw the that's it's called the atlato. Actually, it's an ancient uh, uh, weapon. Actually, so it's uh, you have a lever, kind of a, a lever that holds the 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 arrow, and you throw it. So, um, but for me, man, fitness is just the core of everything. Because I believe, and I, I, I strongly believe, man, that through fitness, you get the real you out of you. Yeah. And I'm sure you feel it when, when, man, you go through something, you, you were going through something in life, man, you go rep some burpees and you come out of that a better person. Absolutely. Yeah. You come, you come out of the water, a better person. So, uh, for me, you know what? I never really thought about it like that. Uh, if it has a relation with art. Because for me, fitness is, is like a like a root, the root of a tree, right? It's like my foundation. When I do fitness, man, I believe like everything else around my life is gonna go better. I know I'm gonna be a, a better friend. I know I'm gonna be a better father, a better husband, a better artist, right? Uh, for example, when I when I have a session, the day of my, se I mean, I work out every day, but especially the day I'm gonna work. I make sure I work out because I know I'm going to be on a mental state that's required to be expressive in the art that I'm going to do that day. And not only that, but also uh, be in a good mood. Hell yeah. To the person that I'm going to spend time with, because like, like you were saying, man, I only work on big pieces. So it's a big commitment to my clients to, to really have that for them. Right. Because I don't want to come in and fucking be moody and, and Ah oh, man, I'm tired. I'm this and that, right? I, of course, I'm not gonna do crazy reps that day, but I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna get a nice set so I can be, so my soul can be out there fully, because that's what w my craftsman is like. That I would just explain this yesterday. It's a, it's an exchange of souls. I give you a little bit of mine, and you give me a little bit of yours, and we, we go out in the world, man, forever, really, till, till, till my end. I'm gonna have that with me. Yeah, yeah. I, I I hear you on that part where you say that you you uh, through sport or th through fitness you reinvent yourself. And I guess for me also the, the approach to art is finding some way to mirror anything that might be inside of you that needs to come out. Sometimes I think you know uh, it's sports that gives you the medium to express that. But I also believe that art is is a great medium to express that as well. I mean, 
I guess in that sense, whenever I train, I mean, I used to deal a lot with art and I still do because I, I, I work in the film industry and usually I work with documentaries, but um, I've also worked with, with long plays like um, fictitious movies and uh, getting that whole visual aesthetic system concept out of you requires you to first stay focused, be disciplined, figure out some sort of a plan. Very important, something that people shy off from is making mistakes. I mean, mm. make a mistake, man, and, and, and you found yourself a guru. Find a problem. That immediately means it has a solution. How are you going to do that? I mean, if, if, if you have that practice settled into your life through exercise, let's say you have a problem and you feel better after it. Let's say you, you're doing an artwork and you have a problem and, and, and you figure it out, you feel better after it. So I think that um, even if you make a mistake trying to figure it out, you learn something. Now you can take a step back and say, okay, how am I going to approach this so I don't make that mistake again and again? Because... I mean, it's human nature to make a lot of mistakes, maybe even the same mistake. I mean, I'm guilty of that. But I guess fitness and art are really, for me, um, a way to discipline habits, a way to clean and cleanse the mind, the, the, the feelings, the soul, the emotions, and something that can open up a new perspective to things. You know, like, let's say I was unfit and I wanted to go over a wall. I might not be able to do that that day, but now I have a goal. I develop a system and I mean, it doesn't have to be a complicated system. It just means I need to practice going up a wall and then eventually I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I might fall if, if I'm afraid of it. I, I might to have inc to encourage myself to try it again. And that's another thing, you know, like you need to find courage to go and hit 1000 muscle ups. You need to find courage to trust your artistry to the level that you're going to leave something imprinted on someone's back for the rest of, of their life. So you're in that constant in and out of a situation where, where you know, you're sure you're ready, you know, you're ready for that because just like you can't control the reason why you're doing fitness right now, it might be a fight someday. You need to defend yourself. You, you can't control the, the, the client that's coming into the tattoo shop and saying, Hell, I, I I want the seven trumpets of the apocalypse on my back. You know what we can do? Like, like hell yeah, I know what we can do. <laughs> we can work on it and get that shit done. So, yeah. Well said. Well said, man. What's up? Yeah, man. You're an artist yourself, man. Yeah. And uh, practice is, uh, it's, uh, you know, like uh, I hear this a lot, man. And uh, I don't know if I'm. Uh, being disrespectful when people tell me this or if I'm not being grateful enough because they tell me that I'm um I'm talented, right? They tell me, oh, yo, you're talented, man. And I'm like, nah, man, I just like it more than you because when I like it more than you, I practice every day. That's that's really part of my routine, just like fitness. I draw every day because of the reason that you're actually talking about right now because when that, that, that guy comes and wants this seven trumpets on his back, I already been practicing this shit so much, you know, I've been drawing, I might not be drawing trumpets, but I've been drawing all this shit. But <laughs> when this guy comes, I'm, I feel confident about that. And uh, so I really, man, I think that's the difference. Of like, um, like, of course, if, if I want to play basketball, I'm not tall enough. That's something that can really help. But if I practice for so long, I will for sure get good. And that's used to say, man, you know, a lot of people put limitations on their life. Yeah. Right? Like, oh, fuck, I can't do that. Yeah. Can't be a writer. Like, you yourself, uh, you, you write, right? Yeah, yeah, You yeah, were yeah. talking about that before. You're a writer, so... And you speak very well, man. You're a very well-spoken individual, which I respect so much, man, because um, that takes practice, too. Hell, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it so, takes a lot of stuttering, too, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And fucking up the words, right? Like, English, English is my second language. And I had to practice that thing a lot to yeah. not you know and sometimes some people can't fucking understand me you know because what what do you say so i gotta practice that word but um you know a lot of people put limitations on themselves and say like i can't do that 
and really little that they know, man, it's just to practice. Just and it doesn't even take that much. If you practice a thing every day for so long, man, that accumulates into a, a, a big amount. And at the end, you know, uh like I remember I couldn't draw faces for shit, Chris, for a long time. And that's one of the biggest things that I do now, right? But for a long time I couldn't draw a fucking face, man. Then there's nose be over here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'd be over here and say this is ugly, right? But uh, uh, I understood this long time ago, man, about practice. And, I, you know, I said, okay, well, I'm going to try to draw a face every week. And I just get at it. And one day, I'm like, they start coming out looking okay. Hell yeah. Practice is beautiful, man. And, uh, I mean, you know, man, you are, you are a practitioner. I mean, you, you're you getting ready to to run that big uh uh, uh, Iron Iron Man is that what you guys gonna do? The uh, what is it called? The it's called it's called an ultra marathon. Ultra marathon, yeah. Well, the ultra marathon, man. I've had this in my mind like f for over a decade, and it's just because it takes place on the day of my birthday. I was born on the August thirteenth of nineteen eighty, and this race is all along the GDR wall. Iron Curtain, so to say, that um, uh, divided East from West Germany in Berlin. And this wall, this perimeter was 100 miles long. It's 167 kilometers. Outrageous. So, <laughs> you know, right now I feel like like a really stupid dude trying to do really stupid <laughs> shit, you know? And, and, and to be honest, I am very, very afraid of it. I'm very cautious. Still, I haven't backed out of it and I won't. I'm, I'm practicing. I've been running. That's the reason why you haven't seen me do burpees because right now I have a focus and I'm trying to elevate the volume on, on my runs. And I'm still suffering the fatigue every week of, of bumping up on that volume. So I don't think it's wise for me to invest more energy somewhere else. Not on that level, at least. I'm not going to do no 300 burpee sessions just because right now I feel, you know, like I need to strengthen tendons, different types of tissues, develop endurance, uh, learn how to deal with fatigue. And my main focus right now is just doing steps, you know, like like one step after the other and trying to get to a distance so yeah that's that's uh, the thing and um the reason why i think it's so stupid to do what i what, <laughs> what i just did is first it took me like 10 years to make take the decision and shout out to simon targesa because i met him last year and he was talking about you know like long runs and i was like and i was true story you can ask him i was like dude i know why you're here we're going to run an ultra marathon together. And I told him about this one and he was like, hell yeah, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> and so I found someone genuinely uh, brave enough. And also, I don't want to say stupid. Enough. I, I just want to say uh, naive enough to picture himself doing that because I mean, just the event is going to tell for itself is if, if, if I'm built for that. I once, only once ran the distance above a marathon. I've never ran a marathon and the highest, longest distance before that was like 36K. So I ran 64K from London to Cambridge along the Lee River and I was destroyed. I had shin splints. I was walking like a penguin, like for five days, I couldn't go to the toilet properly, you know, like hanging onto the walls, everything hurt bad. So now my, my next goal after that, obviously was going to be do a hundred miler. Um, but I, I just want to be out there because right now, as I see it, uh, I'm representing, uh, my German history through that run. Like I said, that wall was built. Uh, on August 13th, 1961. Yeah, I didn't get to that point. And that's the day of my birthday. And my father, he grew up in the GDR. Um, they were chased from Poland by the Nazis because my mom was half Jewish. Uh, my grandma was half Jewish. 
So when the Soviets occupied that zone, they were they were liberated by by, by the Soviets and, and and they were displaced and, and put in a very small little town. I went to visit. I went on my bike from here Berlin to there. It's two hundred and fifteen kilometers away. It's called Niederandorleben. Uh -huh. I'm impossible to pronounce it if you're not a German native speaker, but. Um, uh, you know, I always missed my dad. He died when I was very, very young and I never got to know him. And I thought he had an amazing story because he, when he escaped the GDR, then he grew up in the, in the west uh, side of Germany. And, but then he migrated to Guatemala and he went really down into uh, the highlands. And, and he was living like in a hut, uh, growing goats, making cheese. I have some pictures of him, you know, like, like, uh, like really raw type of it wasn't off the grid because he was actually he 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 back in the day you could study like electronics it was called so it had all to do with electricity he was uh, specialized in generators and oh. uh, so he brought electricity to the village where he was living so he, he created uh, the completely opposite of off the grid but he lived a very down to earth uh, life so i guess i grew up missing him and one way to artificially create a, a connection with him, and I say artificially because I, I don't believe in 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 in, in a beyond. Uh, I, I I believe we got this, you know. And, and if there's more, I don't know. And to be honest, I don't really care anymore. I used to, but um, as far as long as I'm here and I could do something to express myself and express a connection because I'm deeply emotional. You know, so I'm doing this because I have a feeling, not because I have a goal. You know, that's one thing I learned, man. You never grow up to your goal, you know. Um, you're never one with your goal. I mean, if you run a race, if it's a 21K, everyone else has the same goal. And not because you have the same goal of finishing a 21K, it means you're going you're gonna to finish. You never rise. To the level of your goal but you fall to the level of your system and why do i say that because mm -hmm. you have a system and, and and it might work but it might not work on the day of that event so you always kind of fall or, or you stay there at the level of your system because you're not going to do anything superhuman on that day in a miraculous way so yeah right now it's just all about um Expressing that feeling, finding a way of expressing it. In my case, it's going to be to run and suffer. And <laughs> uh, and it, for me, it, it involves having a, a cleansing, cathartic um, experience. And I'm going to try to have fun while at it because Simon is going to be there. And... I'm looking forward to reaching the goal, having a beer and going to sleep. You know, like it's a simple life. It's a good life, man. That's what's man, happening. that's that's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. And Chris, you know what I found out, man, though? What? That this world is made of crazy people, man. Hell yeah. And you know, yeah, I know. You know, man. I mean, I'm sure books you've read, because you're a reader yourself. I know it. I see the books behind you. Um, uh, this is not my uh, home, though. This is not my home. It, it, oh no! It, okay. It's family, but but it's it's not mine. But yeah, I get it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I mean, really, if we look around, man, the world is made of people that had a crazy fucking idea. Absolutely. Right. Man. They, yeah. they thought about this shit, and they're like, "Oh well, fuck! I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna experiment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do fucking a hundred miles. Is fucking just crazy to me." Yeah, you did a thousand pull-ups, though. <laughs> yeah, but you know, and you know what? Same thing. It was crazy at the beginning, man. Shout out to my bro Gusto because he's the one that inspired me. You know, you sometimes you see people doing crazy shit, and you're like, well, fuck, I can't do that shit too. Hell yeah, let's man. go. Gus is such an amazing dude, man. I love that dude, and 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 he's always like pushing the limit, but also he never uh, bursts out. You know, like like he's always calm. <laughs> he's always like chill i'm gonna train for 1000 muscle ups <laughs> like like it's nothing i don't know i like his approach his mindset uh yeah he he i uh yeah gus he's my bro yeah man. we gotta he's get bro, gus man. here man i'm gonna see what happens you uh, got it you got i'm really happy with this but yeah let's go back to to uh our fitness and and our brother aldo man what's up 
Yeah, man. Hey, man. Um, I'm just thankful to life, Chris. Yeah. I'm just thankful that that. Hey, I'm thankful to YouTube, man. That that this is happening because you know what, Chris? When I started YouTube, man, I I was starting like blindly, like you know, like I wanna I wanted to share like tattoo shit, right? And and you know what? I was like, I was sharing that, sharing here things here and there about tattooing and like different clients. I remember I have a few videos like that, but but. Uh, one thing, one big, the of the big things for me, Chris, is to, to try to um, contribute some to the world, right? Do something, man. Like I wanna, I wanna, I wanna contribute something, man. And I try to do that in my personal life, in my real world, which YouTube is still real, but because look at this, that this connection that we're making, and yeah, uh, yeah. and and I started that, but and then and then this is gonna come back to fitness because. Then I started thinking like, okay, so what's one of the things that has made me better on my on my hard work? And it came back to fitness, man. It came back to fitness and the relationship that you have through fitness into your craft. It could be for anything. I'm sure it helps you. Now, and I wanted to ask you this because you were t- touching on this earlier. So, so for you, it doesn't really happen for me because I don't know why, but for you, do you... Uh, Find a little inspiration on your for your work through fitness because I really don't, man. I like I said, I do it for like the the peace that it gives me. That's a good do question, you? man. Um, I don't think so either, man. Uh, I think uh, also fitness. You know, it's 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 not like a like the fountain of happiness, you know, but it, it, it <laughs> it's it's like going through a mine full of pebbles of happiness, you know, and those, those, those pebbles for me are, are certain accomplishments, you know, might've been, you know, like this unbroken set of burpees, my muscle ups, this run. So sometimes, and, and this mind goes straight through me, you know, this mind is full of my treasures and, and, and it's full of these pebbles, but it's never a fountain because, um, you need to come back to reality. You know, and reality is 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 something uh, a kick in the nads. You know, and and, and you got to hustle. You gotta you gotta get your shit straight. I mean, I have a family. Uh, there's interaction and responsibilities within that framework. Luckily, I have a situation where my work is demanding, but only through periods of time, and so I'm able to come in and out of. A low or a heavy load of, of of work, and sometimes I have no work. I was very recently completely worried about my future because one of the things I do is when I work for for production companies, they they produce a movie and they want to show it to film festivals. They need to have subtitles, so I I, I do the subtitling. But nowadays, there's artificial intelligence software doing this automatically. I mean, CapCut can do it. There's a there's a, a widget or plug in for DaVinci Resolve, and there's translating software that creates the text, and then you can. So back in the day, I would do this all by hand: a transcription by hand, a translation. I had my software; it's called Scrivener, and I had my sources on on how to translate. And then I'd use my software to do the subtitling. And these were the three big things I used to do for the production companies. I still do them, but more and more, it's become less and less. So I was like creating stress and worries. And when I went out for a run, when I went out for a training, it's not that I found inspiration to deal with it, but I found an outlet to suspend my mind and and keep it empty because sometimes if you go into a workout with a full mind and and not with an empty mind you might exacerbate whatever it is you're feeling uh you you might not focus you, you you might not be in the zone you're always somewhere else like parallel dimensions i really don't like that and because i'm I guess I have a little bit of a level of obsession in, in the way I train. <laughs> if, if I run, I love to hear my footsteps if, if I don't have audio. So let's say if, if, if there's 
if my feet are thumping, they sound like book, book, book. If I'm skipping, they sound like tick, tick, tick. And, and that sound for me is a reference of my form, you know, whatever it is, but I'm creating a separate experience from the one that was maybe giving me a little bit of stress, man. Yeah. Wow. That's good to know. Wow. Um, that's really good to know. Well, you know, most people, when we're just talking about this, uh, need that music on. Yeah. And that's, that's really powerful what you're saying, man. Wow. So you really find a, a, a form of meditation in your first steps. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to take it back to where this all started. I was reading this one article about uh, virtuosity, how, how people develop virtuosity, you know, like the, the, there are pianists that are extremely virtuous in their, mm -hmm. in their, and you look at them and they're like completely calm. They're like swaving around. They're like wherever. And technically their fingers are light years ahead of any other human. But um, the concept that this book presented on virtuosity was that it is a way to internalize a rule through repetition mm. until you achieve freedom. Mm. So through that practice and through internalizing that rule over and over and over and over and over, you develop uh, a flow, a skill set that would allow you to deal with whatever technicality you might confront through a deep breath, you know, through calming down, through opening up instead of closing and, and, and stuff like that. So uh, that has always been my approach. If I find a skill, I want to learn. I'm not saying I'm developing virtuosity, but I understand that if I want to level up and acquire a minimal level of, of mastery on it, I need to repeat, 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 repeat. And there's variations within this repetition. You don't repeat the same thing over and over. The road you're running on is not the same step after step. So, but you're still taking a step. Uh, so it can become, it, it can get to a level of, of detail that's completely unnecessary. But for me, it, it becomes an exploration also of how I deal with the repetition. You know, I, I, I wasn't good at it. I used to hate school, you know, and like, like, uh, same thing over and over again. But then, you know, like when you grow up, there's certain sayings you re you hear or read. I remember one, uh, saying that you never step into the same river twice because the water mm. flows. Yeah. You, you don't take the same step twice, uh, but you're still taking steps though. And mm. so, yeah, it's a new beginning every time, brother. Man, man, that's a new beginning every day, man. Hell yeah. That's what's beautiful about this life, man. Um, we really got to take it in like that and not feel like uh, life is monotonous. You know, like life is, I, I really, for me, man, I, I, I dislike hearing people now, you know, like some, like here, at least here in the, I mean, you live in the States before, you know how it is, you know, like, uh, People like sometimes you, oh, how you doing? And they're like, ah, oh, you know, just here. I dislike that, man, because I, for me, man, life is so precious. Yeah. I mean, it's a thing that that we have and we don't really recognize, right? We, because, you know, when something you live with, it's like, like you see yourself, right? Like you see yourself and you just... You see you're normal, like, but you've been working out and working out. And some people that haven't seen you for a long time, hey, man, oh, man, you look, you look ripped. And you're like, oh, really? I, I, seem, I seem normal because you see yourself every, every day. day. Same thing with life, man. Uh, this thing is so precious, man, that I, most, of, most of the humans don't take it, don't appreciate it as much, man. It can be taken anytime. And... That's why I love that title of your podcast, man. New beginning, because that's really what it is. I know that it's a new beginning, you know, and, and we really have the, the big opportunity and the big power of, of 
because really we can do something about our days. We really can. We have that power. Absolutely. But we, we, you know, but but we don't. We tend to not see it, and and I mean, we have our community here. All of the brothers be out here grinding it and getting their shit done, and and get into their fitness, their 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 meals. You know, they they trying to um be better, man. And I, that's kind of the biggest things for me to share with the people that you have more control than you think you have. It's your decision, isn't it? It's crazy. It's crazy, man. It's crazy, and it's so powerful. That's why I love, like, I hear you trying to do this at 100 miles, and I know you're going to get it, bro. Who knows, man? I, I, I don't. Know. That's that's not the goal. I, 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 I'm I just going to get there and see what happens because anything can happen, dude. But, yeah, thank you, man. Thank you for believing in me. <laughs> I believe in myself, too. But, shit, man, I, I, I might twist an ankle. Who knows? I, I might exactly, shit, but I, I might shit my pants. You know, I've I've seen that. <laughs> you keep running. Yeah, you I keep, keep running, running with man. those shitty pants. <laughs> but uh, just to to encourage, it's just to to um to like take the decision. Then that's for me, and that's why I do these big reps, man. And uh, I remember you were telling me about you know if uh if I prepare about about doing this reps, I don't, man. I'm not like our brother, uh um. The Dutch destroyer. Hell yeah. Oh, Shout out G-Man, to man. I mean, Gasta. Man, that dude man. is another level though. <laughs> man, he he but he be training all the time, man. He he like he's very methodical with his things, right? He like breaks it down and he bam, I'm gonna you know, he, you can see his progressions, right? And he even commented on on my first uh uh I would try I attempt those five hundred and eighty seals, man. He commented, he was telling me to you gotta train, you know, you gotta which I don't Chris. I don't, man. I just go, yeah. and then I don't know. And that's stupid too. Talking about stupidity, yeah, that's stupid for me. You gotta own to it, man. You gotta talk. own stupidity, man. I mean, it's just yeah, part man, of it. I love it, man. Yeah. And uh, uh, I just—it's just a decision that I make, Chris. Because for a long time I've been believing in myself that much, right? And I test that. Yeah. Every so often, when I say, "Oh, yo, I'm not gonna do this this thousand pull-ups." Because my bro Gusto did him. I'm like, sure, I want to be in this fucking level. I'm going to go. Yeah. But that's how much I believe in myself. And that's what I want to share with people, man. You got to believe in your fucking self. And sometimes you got to throw yourself in the water, man, and see if you can fucking swim. Right? Because, look, I didn't know I could do it. I never even, like, the first time, man, I never even done 200 pull-ups myself. I never have before. Crazy. Because I'm not, I'm just, I just approach uh, those things differently, which, it's stupid because he can get hurt, right? But uh, but then I did it, bro. I'm like, God damn, I did that shit just by believing Man, you, in myself. You did it back to back, though. How how many days rest did you take between those two attempts? It was oh, that was just a couple of days. But and then that's something for for my. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you can say ego, man. I don't really want to say that because it was more so for my trust. Yeah. I want to I wanna be able to, to say that I trust in me, man. Because, look, people is not going to fucking trust you, man. Like, you can tell whoever, in there, they're not going to trust you. But that doesn't matter. If you trust you, that's what's important, man. Because, okay, so, yeah, I failed, man. Which, shout out to my bro, Gusto, again. He's the one that actually told me. He's like, bro, you got that fucking thing uh, upside down. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, fuck, man, shit. So, so for me, <laughs> and I was remember about, that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. Was about trusting me, right? Like I, I trusted me that I was gonna do a thousand, and I kind of like let myself down. And I don't want that. I don't want that feeling in my life, man. Yeah. You know, I just don't want it. It's, it's not a, it's not a good feeling. And I think, uh, uh, that's something that should be taught in kids at at, at an early age. But whatever, man. So that's why I did. Yeah, it was a couple of days. It was a couple of days, and I said, fuck it. I'm like, shit, I hope I don't hurt myself. I'm stupid. <laughs> nah, man. You know? you know, that's just like basically going on an adventure. You know, an adventure, you you never know the outcome. That That's why it's an adventure. And, you know, workouts might be like that sometimes, too. I was doing like this streak of shout outs. You were there. And um, Thank you. I remember I was like during the shawarma grind, thinking, how am I going to do the shout out for, for, for Chibe Castra? <laughs> and I was like, 
now it has to be worthy of his level in some way. So I looked at his videos and I saw he did 700 unbroken burpees. And I've done I've done 500 unbroken burpees twice. And I was like, mm. oh, man, I'm going to try 700. So I went for it. And I, I, I finished doing 705. But you can check the day after of that session. I look like complete crap because I needed to do the, the Shavarma grind again the next day. So I went for a run and I did my 100 push-ups, 100 squats, I think. Uh -huh. And I don't know. I felt, I felt like, like I had a hangover, to be honest. You know, like not only the body was aching, but my mind was fuzzy. And funny fact is that the same day, because I announced it in my video in the beginning, I said, I know Chief is going to come back because I took his 700 spot and I had a 705. And the first thing he commented, <laughs> first thing he commented was like, oh, don't you worry. I have a video coming up. And he did 1,000 unbroken eight count body, uh, body, uh, bodybuilders. And I was like, man, that's Chiba. But you know what? Chiba, he embraces stupidity, but he's a hardcore dude too. Mm -hmm. So he knows he ain't stupid doing stupid shit. You know, he he knows what he's doing and he knows how to deal with pain, discomfort. And I think personally, it boils down to the way he looks at things, because have you ever seen that dude like starting shit out in a bad mood, even if he's sore or tired? He's like always. So, hello, I'm going to do shot color. Yesterday I did 300 Navy Seals and I was like, ah. Too little. I need to do 500. <laughs> like then does 500 in one hour, 40 minutes or 35. I don't know. He does a hundred Navy SEALs in 13 or 12 something. Yeah. I Man, it, what an amazing dude. I need him here too, man. <laughs> now I'm thinking about yeah, I, how, to, how to complete the network here through communication. But let's go back to you, my brother. I had... Um, Basically, also a question towards the high rep strategies you have. You say, okay, my strategy is to say, fuck it, I'm going to try it out. I'm going to test myself. I believe in myself. But I do remember you coming back to the 500 Navy SEALs after, after the elbow incident. And I do remember you going through a streak of, of burpee sessions. Um, so I guess I'm questioning a little bit the, the, your concept of not preparing because you're constantly preparing, I think. Wow. That's, that's good that you say that I train every day. That's, that's definitely something I do. And, uh, the first time actually Chris was, a uh, a, a fucking cramp. I cramped up. I couldn't, I couldn't, yo, know, my mind was there. My mindset was there, which is always. But the fucking body just gave up and I push it to, well, I just couldn't do one more rep, man. And, and I feel fucking horrible. It broke my heart. I want to cry right now thinking about it. It's crazy. <laughs> That's how much I believe in myself. But um, I cramped up and, uh, and uh, oh, man. So it was a while. I kind of got traumatized, Chris, for a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you, man, because, uh, you know, I'm not scared of failing. I failed, but it felt like shit. And, uh, yeah, I was doing... But I, I never really did big numbers during that time. I did pull-ups, and I was doing just my regular training, which I don't really follow a program. Shout-outs to the bros that that actually have a, a set program, right? Like, oh, well, I'm going to – this week I'm going to – which is it's, it's valid. It's valid, definitely. I right? guess so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 300 this week, and then next week I'm going to do 350. and then. Uh, but it wasn't for me. But I knew that I had, I had to complete that. You know, I knew that I was like, I got to get that fucking shit one of these days. And um, I remember how that next one came about. I was actually fasting, man. And, and I don't know if you you believe in fasting. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure if you're spiritual, but I am, you know. And and I believe that through fasting, man, the spirit gets, gets more clear. Right? I believe that 100% myself. And uh, I was fasting, man. And 
and I was fasting for a full 24 hours. And, and then it was, it was like, you know what? I'm going to fucking do that shit tomorrow morning. I just said, I'm going to give it a try, man. And, and that, in that session, man, that was a session that I didn't even talk. I just was focused and I said, I got to get this done. And I was just in my spirit, man. And, and it happened. Some of the words were ugly, you know, I said that, but, uh, you know, I, I, I was like, I got to get this done, man, just for myself. Uh, I don't really have a strategy, man. And I respect people that do, but just for myself, I don't follow a strategy. I don't follow, I barely follow numbers, Chris. I just, when I work out, man, I just work out to a failure. I, I say, I, I come up with this set in my mind on my way to the park or the gym or, or my, my driveway. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to do this, this and that. And, and that's it for an hour, sometimes an hour and 30 minutes. And I just do the reps. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I think your approach is extremely valid in the sense that you're testing fitness. I mean, uh, you're not doing very specific stuff like people would need uh, to train for very explicitly, you know, like you're not doing a hundred meter dash where you have all sorts of variations around every type of movement of the hip that would be needed to strengthen for it. No, you're like, hell yeah, I can run. Hell yeah, I can jump. <laughs> hell yeah, I can do muscle ups. Hell yeah, I can do burpees. Hell yeah, I can do a lot of all of those. Um, so very clearly your approach is, is effective. And I imagine maybe one day you do have a very specific goal and, and you're like, I, I need to train for that. I don't know. Maybe you start bench pressing. You're like, you know, that's the only time I've had a method for training. I, I, mm. I, I went to a gym and we, it was a strictly powerlifting gym. So it was three modalities, the squat, the bench press and the deadlift. Although there was a lot of overhead presses being trained as well. And uh, so I did a periodization uh, with the deadlift and uh, I did a single rep of 425 pounds and a triple of oh. 405 and I was weighing one, 160 so I was very happy with that and I do think the approach of building up learning uh, developing the strength because right now most of the things we do they require strength, but they require above all stamina because mm -hmm. we're not used to, we're not trained for a one arm pull up. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. I would say it's equally difficult to do a one arm pull up to train for a one arm pull up than to train for 500, uh, pull ups, no doubt. Um, so yeah, so there's the, the very intense short burst of, uh, power expenditure and, and then there's the prolonged steady state focused, uh, accompanied by a cadence type of modality where you'd like, you know, you, you, you're, you're more in the zone instead of trying to focus everything on one single movement. So, yeah, I, I, I guess both ways are valid, but I'm just like you in that sense, I do prefer to keep the variables open and, 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 and juggle with, with the state of mind, juggle with, uh, my energies, my capacities. I mean, sometimes I don't have the time, the proper time for doing something proper. So for me, it's like, okay, I'm going to invest it more wisely when I do have more time. I mean, not that I prolong it for next week. I'm just saying today I couldn't tomorrow I will, but I'm not worried because I didn't check it on my list of planned workouts I had for the day because that's not what my approach right yeah Yo, Alvin, yeah man let me ask you how old are you I'm 37 man 37 yeah cool man yeah, you look yeah. young man yeah I know man 37 going on 25 man <laughs> <laughs> man you know what's funny Chris this is the strongest I ever felt in my life man cool it's crazy awesome and uh uh, you know, what's the biggest thing, man, because I don't think about that. And uh, I really try not to put limitations. Yeah. You know, and uh, one of my biggest goals is to live 100 years, man. Let's do that's, it, that, brother. Honestly, honestly, Chris, this is, that's actually my, my goal like, to, through fitness. That's it, man. I just, I just want to be 
uh, I, I want to be an all dog at 60, you know? Shout out to my bro, man. I got his shirt on. But uh, I want to be that, man. I want to be a strong person, you know? I want to be able to not shed in my pants. <laughs> yeah. Be able to go to the toilet by myself, you know? That's, uh, that's, that's really yeah. it, man. Yeah, man. Be independent, you know? That's It's also setting a good example, man. Like, um, I don't, I don't like to educate my daughter by being, you know, like an authoritative, authoritarian dad, you know, like saying this or, um, I mean, I never have a, a discussion with her. I just try to lead by example. I mean, showing her if you got stuff to do, you got stuff to do. If you need help, you know, for me, a huge accomplishment and everything I, 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 I take my time to celebrate it if she asks for help. I'm so mm. I'm so happy for that. You know, some people might think, oh, she's weak or whatnot. No, man, she, she's asking for help, man. She, she trusts you, you know, like there's a bond there. She's, she looks up to you. She believes in you. And she asks you to, for help because she, uh, she knows you might be able to help her out. So, um yeah, maybe she can then develop that skill of of, of being a, a good example, because that's that's nice to see, isn't it? You know, like instead of getting told what to do and how to do it, you know, you explore it and she'll find her way. She's not me. I'm not her. You're, wow. You're, children... you're teaching me something right now, Chris. Cool, man. You're teaching me something right now because I'm I'm both. I'm I'm, a, I'm the example, but I'm also a, a, I'm that too, man. I always tell my son, you know, and. You know how um, I like to be, be honest with him. Like me and him have a, a man-to-man relationship. You know, like I'm honest, like clear honest. Sometimes I feel like I'm too honest. And, and one thing I tell him, I'm like, look, man, uh, I some things I cannot tell you right now because you're nine. But, you know, I want to really be honest and, and I express my mistakes that I made with him. And I'm like, don't do this, man, because look, when I was a kid, I did this and I tell him, uh stories man of my own life and but same thing with what you say man the, the example it kid, your kids are not gonna listen to you if you don't say example man you can tell them all you want but if you don't set the example they're not gonna fuck that but first they're not gonna trust you because like oh how, they're gonna recognize kids are too smart man hell yeah they're man. gonna be like how are you gonna tell me this that and you are he's Look at you eating shit and you don't want me to eat this? Yeah, yeah. You can easily become a hypocrite just because you lose patience, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's a big responsibility, man, to be a parent. Big response. It's crazy, man. I, I don't even drink because of that myself. For myself, like I say, you know, everybody has their own uh, lifestyles or whatever. But I don't I do not do that because of myself. Because, uh, and he has the same mentality, you know, he's... he's I can see it now in him, you know, he knows that that's, at least for me, because I had a bad experience with that. So I'm like, look, this is happened with me, man. I did a few, you know, and then I, I, I fucked up. So I don't do it. So, but I, I show him, you know, we'll be in gatherings and I don't do it, man. Yeah. Example. No, I love this topic, man, because lately, I don't know. I think there's lots of ways to be toxic in life. And I had the situation where I have a daughter as a child. I have no idea what it means to grow as a woman. And mm-hmm. I grew up without a, a father. So I don't, I was never aware that there's like a concept of masculinity. Uh, mm-hmm. I just learned to, to distinguish between good and bad people because they can be men, female, trans whatever there's good and bad people and not their definition of gender or or they would the way they express masculinity or femininity is the problem sometimes it's their personality it's them and lately you know like for me becoming a father my daughter is seven years old she's gonna ter- turn eight the day of my birthday oh wow yeah she was born oh, on man, my birthday. Yo, it's your birthday that's beautiful i was like <laughs> I was worried about the concept of being a father because it was so loaded through the lack of me having a father. 
So hmm. I had a grandfather and I was like in, in, in families, there was like, uh, issues, legal issues. And uh, my mom lost custody of me. And, and, and so, so I went through all of that without ever having that institution of the parents guiding me and whatnot. So I was like, basically without any tools mm. and, and, you know, like, uh, it, it simply dawned on me that she needs a good person in her life. That's it. You know, a good person doesn't meet, need to be a, a, um, a, a macho man, doesn't need to be a, a power woman, um, a tiger mom, as they're called now. And <laughs> nah, I mean, there's so many levels to, to their developments. And there's also a component which is like emotional intelligence. And if, if I'm able to show myself as someone who is capable of doing things, but is also highly vulnerable uh, and doesn't hide the vulnerable vulnerability, then there's, there's something things where she might open up and develop uh, um, an asset in her personality where she can deal better with things she might think she's not strong at instead of hiding it, instead of, you know, just create means to connect with others so you can move forward instead of thinking you're all alone by yourself, because that might be the case one day. But if you've learned to ask for help, for help, man, there's 9 billion dudes in this world. One of them is going to give out their hand. I'm sure. Wow. Wow. That's powerful, Chris. You're right, though, man. You're right. Uh, good character is the only two kinds of people, man. One with good character and the other one with a bad character, man. And, and that's really what we, we should be looking at in people, man. Yeah. Um, You know, uh, we're losing that. You know, we sometimes get mixed into all this, like this person is that, that person is that. And, and really, we got to look into uh, the character of them. Is that person, does that person have a good character or does that person don't have a good character? Yeah. And if you, you know, if you're dealing with one that does it, man, you got to stay away. Absolutely. That's, that's powerful, Chris. That's powerful, man. I didn't know that about you. And, uh, you know, I was telling my wife about you and I'm like, man, you know, I feel like Chris share a, kind of a background like mine, the same, you know, I grew up without a father and uh, I grew up moving all the time. Yeah, me too, man. You know, and uh, New that, that really no beginnings all the fucking time, Chris. Oh my god, man! But you know what? Now I hated it growing up, man. You know, oh, we're gonna move, we're gonna go to the states, we're gonna, you know, move as from a state to a state. And uh, but you know what? Now, uh, at this age, man, I'm grateful for those experiences because they really teach you some shit, you know, they really, they really give you a, a, a different character. Hell you see yeah. things differently. You um, experience. I mean, I know a lot of people. I feel like uh, uh, that's something you can't really experience if if you don't um, move, honestly. Or if you don't, I mean, I, I could say travel, but it, it's one thing to travel. And it's, it's yeah. another thing to live in Guatemala and then you come to, to the States and then you go to England and then you live in Germany. So shout out to you, man. Thank you, my brother, man. And and I can imagine it wasn't happy. It wasn't an easy thing to move, man. You know, when I left Guatemala, I left Guatemala because I have the German nationality. My dad died when I was four, so I couldn't speak the language. I had gone to a German school in Guatemala because my dad's um, left left like a, an insurance that would pay for our school. But I was a bad boy at school, so they threw me out of that <laughs> school. And then I went to a, a some other fucking badass school, and but but I wanted to learn. I wanted to go to university, and and I had a car back then. I sold that car. I had an electric guitar. I sold it. I sold everything. I had a couple of skateboards. So in some way, I was already a little kind of privileged. I mean, compared to to I, I don't live a, a normal Guatemalan life. Uh, obviously, that should be clear right from the beginning. Uh, but when I came, I had tucked in a belt underneath my boxer shorts, $5,000 cash. I don't know if it was maybe 6000 And I was sleeping at these 
dirty ass pensions where they would put um, homeless from the state. And I was not even aware of this. I was just looking for a cheap place to stay. And I w wow. ended up in Frankfurt, which is uh, actually near where from Simon Tragesa lives. And my first confrontation was just like pure solitude, man. I was like afraid mm. of everyone. But since I had already made that experience through moving and moving and moving, as you know, like first you got to be patient, man. Nothing's going to happen by itself. Two, you got to be a little bit brave and go out there, you know, like make your experience, go and, and make some mistakes. And a third, you got to learn to ask for help, man. And, you know, uh, I think that's one of the most human things. And I think subcutaneously, like the underlying text of this uh, community in, in, in Burpees is people reaching out a hand to each other, man. We're out here helping each other, you know, be it through being a, an example. Or in my case, you know, I, I had a, like a like a like a sad moment in Guatemala where I knew my, my grandfather, he can't hear me anymore. He can't see me anymore. He's barely walking. He tripped over uh, because of some plants in the garden where he likes to sit. So I was like, and, and then I made like, a, I worked on the garden and, and, I, and I, I made a, a smooth path for him so he wouldn't trip and fall. And I was like, shit, it's pretty late for all of this. I'm happy I did it. But yeah, this is, this is probably it, you know, like, there's no more reception. So, so it's just like saying goodbye to a unmanned ship drifting into the ocean. And uh, then I, I stopped and I guess in some way someone noticed it was uh, maybe me asking for help, for support and true story, a paradox. That dude, I love him too, man. He's like very motivational to me. I, I would think also that the, the podcast, when, when I thought about the podcast, I thought about his radio show as well. But he was like, yo, bruv, I know something ain't right. <laughs> you know, like how he talks and mm. he left me a message on, on Instagram. And I said, yeah, yeah, man, you're absolutely right. And I love that, man. Nice, nice, nice to, 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 to hear. And a lot of pe other people uh, wrote. So, man, there's strength in asking for help. Wow! Wow! Man. You 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 really putting putting my mind into that, Chris. Thank you, thank you, man. Uh, uh, really, really, you putting that into my mind really deeply today. Awesome! I really man. appreciate I that. that, man. Thank you. Um, I'm not afraid of asking for for help anytime, but um, you're really making me more aware through this talk right now because you are mentioning a couple of times now, and um. I always like to learn from anybody, man. I'm always an open book, a student, always. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Man, this, this talk has literally been a pathway from the dark to the light because now I can see the complete background. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 man. I had to go in my car. I was telling Chris that my family is sleeping. It's 5 a.m. in the morning here. So I was like, you know what? I got I to gotta go do it out there and... Uh, yeah, man. Thanks for taking <laughs> no, the time. I also came somewhere else because uh, they were actually um, fixing up some windows in my apartment that they are like old windows and they had to polish them and stuff like that. So I said, Hi, I can't do that here. So, so yeah, I, I went over to, to this place and, and it's complete and other quiet. So I love that. Thank my you, friend, man. we're reaching over 60 minutes. I, for my, on my behalf, have, have touched the subjects I wanted to touch upon, but I, I give you the closing segment, wondering if there's anything you would like to add, ask, or contribute in any way. Well, man, uh, this was very powerful, very powerful. I'm so uh, blessed that this happened, man. Um, it's massive, man. It's massive, and and I got I want to give shout outs to YouTube because this is this is uh, how it, it it was you know meant to happen, and and it made it happen. Yeah, this technology, and really, Chris, I don't have much to say, man. But thank you. That's really all I gotta say, man. Thank you a million, and uh, shout outs to all the brothers out there that are fucking grinding and getting the shit done. Hell yeah! I, I, I'm immensely grateful, man. Thank you. 
Super awesome. It's just powerful. Aldo, likewise, man, uh, it's always nice to see someone who's on the go, on the move, just like me. I've never had a steady home, a steady place. I guess uh, this this world is our home, and this 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 life, you know, it's it's not always just a path towards death, but it's one away from birth, and we're leaving <laughs> we're leaving that trail, man, behind us, and we can maybe one day look at that background and see and say, hell yeah, man, we we we've come a long way now, haven't we? And and we can let others just like take off by their own, man, because we showed them how to walk. Definitely, man. Oh, Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's powerful. Thank you. Mi hermano, un fuerte abrazo desde Berlín hasta tu casa. I really enjoyed this talk, man. It felt very refreshing. I feel like a, a, a new beginning of the soul has uh, struck upon me. And uh, seeing the smile on your face, man, I... I, I feel corresponded in that feeling. And it's nice to talk about simple, subtle, emotional things with, with among, amongst men, which is rare. And look at us. We barely know each other. We opened up. That's right, man. It, 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 I'm not afraid of that, man. Uh, I, you know, I share, share here that, you know, it's personal. And I don't care, man. I share because maybe that somebody's going through things like that and and... It can give him a little bit of light, man. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's it. And it always takes an extra little effort to see things under that l nice light, doesn't it? I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. screw the light. You got a light in yourself. And you and if you project that light on the thing you're looking at, you're going to see it under a whole nother light. That's real, man. That's real. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. My brother, I'm going to... I'm gonna, um, wrap it up i guess it was such an amazing and, and beautiful experience to talk with you man uh very uh, uh I, i feel enriched you know like like in a very immaterial way but in a powerful way that i feel it so hell yeah shout out to gusto man gusto is creating bridges here man and and uh, definitely yeah um if Yeah, I hope to continue doing this. And you got to. Yeah. You got to, man. You got to. Who's next? I don't know. So that's I don't the, know. That's the question. I'm going to see man? I'm going to see if if <laughs> if I look for someone or someone looks for me, but um I'm going to think about it. And I mean, I have a whole list. Everyone here is so appealing to 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 uh, get to know, isn't it? I don't know. Like everyone I, there's so many people here that are just like uh, extremely interesting. And I can imagine a talk like ours happening with any one of those. By the way, we're meeting up in June 21st in the Netherlands. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I'm sorry if I messed it up. Simon Tragesa is going to be there. The UK fraction with Paradox and his frame, friend Berko. They call him over there the Punani Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. That dude talks, man. Like the child. <laughs> I don't know. He's got good, good nicknames for his friends. And yeah, we'll see what happens. I, I think Paul Hurst is coming as well. Oh, wow. Um, Emery's The Celt was in discussion. Uh, Frido Van Bergen, I think is his last name. I don't know. It's going to be a nice little community. Um, I definitely want to hit a coffee shop up with 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 some of those dudes, uh, but first of all, we're gonna get some reps in. Hell yeah! Oh man, that's beautiful. What a connection! Yeah. Shout out to YouTube again, man. Shout out to YouTube, man. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Okay, man. I'm gonna end this, and I'm gonna say to everyone: stay tuned. You know, Crusades of Motivation is gonna be linked down below probably already have but if you haven't subscribe to his channel our dear friend Aldo he brings in some serious heat and can't wait for episode three so thank you very much and keep the grind alive yo yeah <laughs>